Now let's add some bullets to shoot these goblins with. If I go back into my player, I have my physics process section here and I have my get input function. Get input is where I'm going to take my keyboard input for moving them around, but also mouse input to be able to take these bullet shots. I'll add a comment to separate the two, so this one is going to be just the mouse clicks. For this we use Godot's input function. I will say if input dot is, and there's different types, so we can check for a different kind of input, but the one I want is mouse button pressed. And in the brackets we put in the mouse button that we're interested in. So I only want this to happen on the left mouse button click. So if that does happen, then we want to fire off a shot. Well, a shot or a bullet is going to need a direction. So we actually need to know which way we're aiming. We will create a variable called dir for direction. And we will take the mouse position by saying get global mouse position. And we will subtract the player's position. So between the two of these, I will have a direction pointing at the mouse. I'm not actually going to create the bullets inside of the player class though, or the player node. Instead, I'm going to emit a signal. We'll go up to the top here and we'll define a new signal called shoot. Now, whenever I click the mouse to take a shot, I can emit that signal. So I'll say shoot.emit, but I can actually pass arguments inside of this as well. So I need to pass in the player's position because I need to know where the bullet is going to originate from and also this direction variable. Now that we have a way of detecting these bullet shots, we need to create the actual bullets. So we'll set up a new scene and inside of here we will create an area 2D node. This will allow us to set up our bullets with a way of checking whether they have hit something. I'm going to rename this area 2D to bullet and I will add a couple of additional child nodes to it. The first one will be sprite 2D and the second one will be a collision shape. Let's first of all assign the sprite 2D image. So we go into our assets and there's a bullet down here. So we set that up there. Then we can go into our collision shape, switch over to the 2D view and we'll just zoom in on the bullet. Now for this, I'm not going to use a square or rectangular. I'm just going to use a circle shape and just shrink it down a little bit so that it matches the outline of our bullet. And lastly, I need to configure the collision options on this uh, area 2D node. So the layer that the bullet is going to live on is layer four and the collision will be against, well, we actually will keep collision against the bushes so that when the bullet hits one of the bushes, it just gets deleted. And the other one is going to be enemies. And now we can save the scene inside of our folder and move on with actually generating these bullets. So we've got our player clicking the left mouse button to emit a signal to shoot. And then we have our bullet scene. So we need a way of tying these together. And that's going to happen inside a new node. We'll go back into our main scene and the main node and add a child node, which is going to be a node 2D. I'll rename that to be my bullet manager. And then just to keep it tidy, I'm going to move it just underneath the player. It's not a child of the player node, but it's just underneath it. The bullet manager node doesn't need any other child nodes added to it. We just need to add a script onto it. So this will give us a blank script with a ready and a process function. We can get rid of both of these. The main thing that this bullet manager needs to know is where the bullet scene is. So we need to load that into it. And the way we'll do that is by saying at the beginning, export a new variable called bullet underscore scene. And the type is going to be a packed scene. Now when I save this and I go into my bullet manager again over here, it appears with a new property on the right hand side. So it's asking for the bullet scene and it says that it's empty. I can go into my scenes, grab the bullet, drag it over here, just like I do with textures and other files. And now it actually loads that in and it assigns it into this bullet scene variable. The next thing to do is go into our player class or our player node here and go into its defined signals. So we created our own custom signal called shoot. If I double click that to connect it, it wants me to, by default, connect it into our main node, but I actually want to connect it into the bullet manager. So it's connecting from the player and it connects into the bullet manager. That gives us the new function here. And this is where we're going to handle the bullet generation. But remember, when we emit this signal from here, we actually pass a couple of variables, position and direction. So inside, oh, where did it go? Inside the bullet manager, 
when we have this parenthesis here, we need to receive these arguments. The first is position and the second is direction. Now we can create a bullet. I'll create a new variable called bullet and I will set it to my bullet scene and then pass instantiate on it. So this will create a bullet from that bullet scene. It will create an individual bullet node. Well, once that is done, I need to add it as a child node. So we'll say add child bullet. And then we can start assigning these values onto our bullet. So for example, we can say the bullet's position is equal to that pause variable and the bullet's direction is equal to this dir variable, but normalized. Lastly, we're just going to add this into a bullets group just so that we can keep all of the bullets grouped together when we come to work with them later on. And this will allow us to create the bullets. However, only position is an actual property of this area 2D node. Direction isn't. So I need to create a variable in my bullet node by adding a script to it. So we'll create a new script here and right at the top, we will add a new variable called direction, which is going to be a vector two. And while we're at it, I'll define a second variable, which is the speed at which the bullets will move. And I'll set that to 500. Now, if I run this, I should be able to take a shot. So we've generated a little bullet there. It's actually quite hard to see because it's yellow and the background is green, but I'm generating little bullets. And if I run around, I'm basically just painting with these bullets. So the bullets are working, they're coming in. So now let's actually make them move. Making them move isn't actually too difficult. There's no physics involved. So we can get rid of this ready function. We don't need that. All of the movement is going to happen inside the process function. To move them, we just manually adjust the position. So we will increase the position by the speed multiplied by the direction, but also multiplied by this delta variable, which is inside of our process function. If I run it again and I take a shot, the bullets actually move in the direction of the mouse. So that's working pretty well. Problem is we're generating way too many bullets. So I'm basically just spraying them all over the place. We want a way of limiting how many bullets can be shot at one time. Let's go back into our player node and right at the top, we'll define a new variable. And this is going to be can shoot. So it's going to be a Boolean and it'll be either true or false. When we first begin the game and the player is created, we want that variable to be set to true so that the player can take a shot immediately. Then when we check for a mouse click, as well as checking whether the left mouse button is being clicked, we also want to add a second statement, which is can shoot. So can the player actually shoot? Even though we've pressed this left mouse button, we need to check that he's actually allowed to take the shot. And if those conditions are met and the shot is taken and the signal is emitted, then we set that variable back to false. The issue now is that we don't have a way of setting it back to true. So we'll only ever be able to fire one single shot. If I test this out and I hold left click, it doesn't matter if I click it again, I can't take a second shot. I want to have some kind of cooldown so that after a certain amount of time has passed, I can take another shot. So I'm going to add a timer node onto this player and I will change the name of that to be my shot timer. In terms of the properties, I'm going to leave them as they are. So it'll be a one second cooldown and I don't want it to be an auto started timer. Instead, I want this timer to begin as soon as I've taken a shot. So I'll drag it over here and I will say dot start. So that will begin our timer. Then I can go into this timer signals and connect the timeout signal into my player script. Then right at the bottom where it creates this new function, I simply reset the can shoot variable back to true. And if I test this out now, as long as I'm holding down the left mouse button, you can see that every second I'm taking another shot. So the cooldown timer is working well. Another problem with these bullets is that they will go on indefinitely. So even once they've left the screen, they are actually still in memory. We just can't see them anymore. What I want to do is add a timer to these as well. So we're going to add a timer node up here and we'll set this timer to, for now, let's just say, yeah, one second is okay. Just to test it out and we'll make it an auto start timer. Then we will connect the timeout signal here. And as soon as that's happened, we want to just get rid of this bullet. So we run Q underscore free and I will delete it from memory because I've set the timer to one second. If I go over here and take a shot after one second, that bullet disappears. So one second is a little bit too short. So let's just change that to say five seconds. That way we won't see the bullets. They'll go off the screen comfortably and then they'll disappear. 
Another thing I want to do is check whether the bullet has actually hit something. And because it's an Area 2D node, I can use the body entered signal here as well. So this will be another one that I add into the script. And what this will do is return the body that it's collided with. For now, I can just print that out. So if we just print body and then say dot name, when I shoot against something, let's say one of these enemies, it tells me down the bottom that it's collided with the goblin. And I can also shoot one of the bushes. If it collides with that, it says it's collided with the world. So let's do that collision first. We'll say if body.name is equal to world, then that means that the bullet has hit one of the bushes. So all I want to do here is just delete the bullet. So I'll run Q3 on it. Now, if I go and shoot one of the bushes, the bullet instantly disappears. I can also check for enemies in the same way, but the enemies need a little bit more work first because they don't have a way of dying. So I need to add a little bit more into the script. Right at the top of our goblin script, I'm going to add a variable called alive because now I need to know whether this goblin is alive or not. So we'll begin with just a boolean here. And then as soon as the enemy is created inside this ready function, we will set alive to true. I can then use this variable inside of my physics process function because I only want any of this stuff like the animation and the movement and so on to happen as long as that enemy is alive. So I can say if alive and then just indent all of the stuff inside of that. Else, so if the enemy is not alive anymore, we just put in a pass. But now I need a function to actually handle the goblin's death. So I will create a function called die. And the first thing it's going to do is take that alive variable and set it to false. So that's going to stop all of the goblin's movements. I also need to stop the animation. So I drag over this animated sprite 2D node and say stop. At the same time though, it's going to be in the run animation. So it's just going to stop in one of these frames. I actually wanted to change over to the dead animation, which is just one frame anyway. So we'll carry this over and then we'll say dot animation animation is equal to dead. And another thing I want to do at this point is disable the collision shape for the goblin because it can still take collisions with bullets. So what could happen is that I shoot a goblin, I kill it, but then it still checks for collision. So if I shoot the dead goblin again, the bullet is going to disappear. And in fact, if the player runs into the dead goblin, it's still going to detect that that goblin has got the player. So I need to cancel that collision, effectively just turn it off. So I go into this area 2D collision shape, I just drag it over and it will give me the path towards it. And I want to disable it. But when I was developing this and I disabled it directly in this code, it gave me some errors saying that I have to defer that function. So I added set underscore deferred. This means that this functionality and this code will only run once all the physics processes are completed. So what I can do here is just put what I want to run, which is disabled being set to true. This way the code will wait until it's safe and then change the collision shape. Now we have a function to actually kill the goblins or rather for them to die. We need to link that to the collision checks here. Well, the first check is if the collision is with the world. There are only two things that I'm checking for collision with. If we go back into our collision properties here, it's against the bushes, which are the world or the enemies. So if it's not the bushes, then I can just add an else statement. Then it must be one of the enemies. Well, the first thing I want to check is if that enemy actually alive, because if it's already dead, then just ignore it. So if body dot alive, and if it is, then let's run the die function. And once we've done that, I can delete the bullet anyway. So I'll run this Q3 on it. Now, before we go too much further, let's just test this out and see if it works. So when I take a shot, that goblin stops and now the bullets pass through it because it's just changed into its dead state. And that takes care of the bullet. So we can actually save this scene and close it down for now. There was one little thing there that I noticed that I want to change though, which is the draw order. So the goblins are actually drawn in front of the, of the player. I want it to be the other way around. The problem is that they are in our main scene. So we've got our player, but there aren't any enemies here. The enemies are created in the code, so they're always going to be drawn over everything else. The way to fix that is to go into my player scene here and change the Z order. So if I go into, or rather the Z index, if I go into ordering, 
the higher the number, the higher the layer on which it's drawn. So if I put this to one, then the player is going to be drawn above everything else. So if I now go over to one of the enemies, the player is the one in front, which means that when they're dead, it passes over them. And that will do for this video. If you found this useful, then please leave a like and I will see you in the next one.